because I was on a quest for like the, depending on the, how big or small, minuscules or Carolingian, Carolingian one, Carolingian two. I really did my homework. Are there people our days that uh, that are doing or at least are able to do stuff like this? Able, yes, I think. Um, less because uh, what are the reasons why a publisher would hire a hand letterer now? It's more about fashion and personality, meaning. Um, just like anybody, like there's a lot of illustrators, but when they look at a portfolio, does this person have a style? And if mm -hmm. they have a recognizable style and I like it, then they're going to hire you. It's not just about a general craft anymore. Mm -hmm. So being a good calligrapher is not enough, you know? Uh, now, different versions of that story, but if you look at what people respond to, um, some people develop a style and they work it again and again and again and again. I'm more of a design generalist. I, I, the simple way is I can do a lot of styles, mm -hmm. but it's, I've looked at letters from a very broad range. I, I love lots of different things. I like the precise work. I like the loose work. I like uh, expressive uh, abstract work and I like a very classical thing. And even I cannot, um, really come up with a, a reasonable explanation because usually if somebody's heavy into the classical they're kind of like this about very expressive work and vice versa you know people yes. who are very expressive about their stuff um think that the classical stuff's too uptight you know mm -hmm. and um so the very tight stuff for instance an advertising agency is not going to be interested in they just, they see that and they go, yeah, type. You know? <laughs> and um, the, the uh, they, something a little bit more expressive and loose that's gonna make their product or ad look special or proprietary. And they are looking for that. They're looking for that. It's just like writing a hit song, you yes. know? Uh, you need a hook. That's a very good one. <laughs> yeah, it, you need a hook. So there's lots of great musicians, but not everybody has a hit song. Not everybody's Billie Eilish. That's I just dated this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's funny because I never thought about it, and, and it, it's so true. It's so true. I I get to think about it a lot because, um, well, obviously it's not just my job. What. That fellow I told you about, Tony, he used to say, well, you're trying to have a job and a hobby at the same time, you know, because I was that interested. And I am, you know, mm -hmm. all the work that I've done that was not for my job, uh, you know, things that I just wanted to do, uh, you know, a lot, only an artist understands that, you know, that you just want to do it, you know, <laughs> yes. and I would do a lot more of it if uh if it wasn't for the fact that i also earn my living this way you know i have to do projects that actually pay the bills i want to maybe i'll uh with this question i'll give i'll get you back in the beginning but i'm really curious like uh what's what calligraphy scripts did you start it with and uh what were the struggles you had in the beginning as a calligrapher how did you over overcame them and What's, differ what's the biggest difference between being a beginner at your time and being a beginner today? Well, you know, I'm going to have to admit that I was unusual because I, like, I was sort of like a kid. I looked at everything and thought, no problem. <laughs> you know? And some people would think that sounds arrogant, and I have not really admitted to that, but that was my attitude, you know. Um, so I just went into it and said, I'm just going to do it, you know. So... I can remember, I was so grateful reading Edward Johnston's book that he put, he wrote it all down. For the longest time, I was trying to figure things out without reading a book like that, you know? Um, I discovered the typefaces by Eric Gill because I was on a quest for like the perfect Roman alphabet. Now I was still a sign painter and I started to recognize things about Roman letters that this somehow this is good, closer to what I like, this is not good. This, and I'd be looking, I'd be walking around New York trying to find the secret, you know, who had, who knew it, things. <laughs> and, and then I started looking at type. And um, as I said, Eric Gill comes to mind with the typeface Perpetua. And not just the typeface, but um, Perpetua 72. 
uh, it, if back in those days when they designed typefaces, they designs changed depending on how big or small. So 72 is a display size. So he put, it's more refined than the body um, size, like 14 point. I, of course, I studied Gaudi and I studied all those people, typefaces. But then you asked about calligraphy. I read Johnston, so naturally I went into, Johnston doesn't start with the foundational hand. It starts, he starts with kind of an Irish half uncha. Hmm. He, uh, he calls it flat pen. So from there, that took me over to the Book of Kells. And, um, and right off the bat, I recognized I had a dilemma. Johnson is advocating, just hold your pen flat. And I could see things going on. This is where being a sign painter was helpful. Hmm. In sign painting, there's no such thing as a fixed angle of the brush. Everything is manipulated all the time to get the image on the page. I recognized in the Book of Kells, I don't care what people say, maybe pressure was used, maybe pen turning was used, doesn't matter. Those images are staring back at us uh, for uh, what, a thousand, twelve hundred years? I forget. But uh, um, and you know, the technique is um, whatever you think it is, really. I mean, uh, unless we could get in the time machine, uh, they they did it and they got a certain look to this thing. And and the, from that, I I started working on. It. So that had a lot of pen moves. So that was one of the first scripts I was actually learning. And then the Johnston makes the case of if you follow the evolution of writing, it starts Roman capitals into rustics, into uncials, into half uncials, into um, minuscules or Carolingian, Carolingian one, Carolingian two. Uh, eventually he distills it to foundational, but I don't think he gets that far in his first book. I think that's later. Um, and then he talks a little bit about what comes after, which is cursive. Um, and uh, italic, you know. And so those, I went through the whole thing. I just did the evolution of that. So, cause I was on my own time um, and making signs during the day and studying this at night, weekends, or actually I was making enough to take days off and, and really throw myself into this. Hmm. So um, the question was for me is, how do you figure out what is good? If you, you know, when I listen to and watch people online, it's usually whatever, whoever they've met, whatever they last learned, that's the thing they think is good. And sometimes they say, oh, this is the best so-and-so. And I'm going, well, you haven't seen everything, you know, you, you don't really know. Uh, it, it reminds me of those uh, Rolling Stone top 100 guitarists of all time, you know. Those charts never make any sense. It's just based somebody's opinion, you know. Yeah. But I was on that quest. What is good? What what is what are the qualities you really want? So I'd have to say the one that came the closest was Herman Zoff. You know. Hmm. Um, now I also know that everybody's influenced, even him. And uh, so I I really did my homework on uh, who who was influencing who at what time in history, and. Um, so that's, you had to find that information. I had to go to the New York Public Library and find old books that were out of print. Uh, I, the bibliography of some of the books was great. I haven't mentioned Kadich yet. That was another breakthrough. Um, you, so um, that was also a beginning. But I would say Johnston Kadich and John Howard Benson, those three books, uh, Kadich's Origin of the Seraph, Writing and Illuminating and Lettering by Edward Johnston and the Elements of Lettering by John Howard Benson and Arthur Grant Carrot. Those were like three very reliable uh, books for me at the time. I was already mindful of the fact that the, the shapes of letters mattered and not everybody had the same sensitive sensitivity or awareness of that. There was some calligraphers, it was, I could tell they were just putting down whatever came off the pen, you know? And then other, somebody like Zoff, he was definitely somebody, because he was a type designer, the image of letters mattered. But he was, he was trying to shoot for a very high bar, you know? I mean, he, he, he's from Nuremberg, Germany. And that's where uh, I believe the Neudorfer, he had access to a lot of good look, 
good calligraphy to originals and stuff. But of course, he was an unusually bright and talented person too, you know, so. Um, <laughs> um, 